Hey guys, my name is Dan. I'm a veterinarian and chloramphenicol. They had to do it. So I watched the news the other day and um, there was a video of a dog named Ike who got the mysterious respiratory illness, went to emergency and it wasn't getting better and they had to bust out the chloramphenicol and it worked. Thank goodness for Ike and his family. Ike feels better now. Super excited. Now, what that does is now every doggy that walks in, people are really worried, and for good reason, that their doggy may need uh, chloramphenicol. So here's the deal, guys. The mysterious uh, respiratory illness in doggies, we haven't diagnosed it. We don't know if it's all related or linked or all. This is pneumonia. We don't know yet. Um, is it something? I think it probably is going to be something. It's probably going to be some kind of altered pathogen. Um, I'm really, really confident it's going to be something bacterial or some kind of microplasm. But with, with that being said, um, it's it did respond to chloramphenicol, and chloramphenicol is an antibiotic. But the thing is, in most cases, and I see pneumonia almost on a daily basis at the vet hospital, is you know when dogs come in with pneumonia, we're popping an IV in their arm, we're giving them IV antibiotics. You know, usually some kind of like medicine like Unison or which is like Ampicillin, Sulbactin, or we're doing something really strong like Enrofloxin, like a Batrol, like a fluoroquinolone. So we're giving strong antibiotics, we're hydrating them, and so far in our practice, we've had no problems with doggies not getting better. And, and, I, and I hope that's the case long term. But what happened with Ike is they did the same thing I did at the emergency clinic. They were treating him aggressively, but he kept getting worse and worse and worse. So then the emergency doctor, um, one of them was like, no, we're not going to do it. And the other one was like, what do we got to lose? Fair enough. I totally agree with that statement. So they get chloramphenicol and magically Ike got better. Now, why don't veterinarians do chloramphenicol right away? Now, it's one of those things with like bacterial resistance. We don't want to jump to the big hitters right away, right? Because we don't want to get resistance. And it's inappropriate to jump to that right away because most dogs don't need it. And if we're being... If we're being responsible with our case and we're monitoring it through, we can see if the doggy's not getting better. And based on clinical signs and symptoms and vitals and x-rays and follow-up diagnostics, we can definitely tailor our treatment to best suit that patient. But the issue with doing chloramphenicol early is it's a really strong antibiotic, has great broad spectrum. We don't want to make things resistant to it, number one. And in a very close second... It, it has some pretty nasty adverse effects and side effects for humans. It can cause like an unreversible aplastic anemia, which means that your bone marrow is not working anymore, and that, that will lead to death. Um, the other thing is, of course, we, there is some bone marrow suppression in dogs. Um, to my knowledge, it's not as severe as humans. Also, you get some really nasty GI upset from it. So it is a really robust drug, really robust uh, drug. So you got to be careful with it. And it really shouldn't be handed out to just, you know, coughing dogs. Uh, we should be following protocols and giving um, the most appropriate antibiotics first and building up to medicines like Coram Fenicol if deemed appropriate medically. So, yeah, guys, that's my soapbox. If you go into your veterinary hospital and you ask for chloramphenicol, don't do that. Um, they're, they're not going to give it to you, and they shouldn't. If they do, um, they shouldn't. And uh, um, if anyone is ever hand, um, giving chloramphenicol to their doggy, um, gloves need to be worn, hand washing. Uh, humans need to be incredibly careful with the medicine. So with that being said, guys, I'm Dr. Dan. Dr. Dan, I'm Dan. I'm a veterinarian. I hope this was super helpful. At this point, guys, with the mysterious respiratory illness, we don't know what it is. We don't know if any of these cases are linked. But with that being said, vaccinate your doggies just in case underlying Bordetella or any upper respiratory complexes are leading to it. And also try to eliminate fomite contact with bowls and other objects that are shared. And try to reduce uh, daycare and day play. Um, I know a lot of the um, places here in town that offer that are kind of nervous about that. But really, guys, we need to be really careful about um, uh, socializing right now and to see how this plays out over the next couple months. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Watching. I really, really appreciate it. You are all amazing. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to this channel and um, you can always reach out to me on my about section. Thanks, guys. Take care. Bye.